Howdy folks. So over the last couple days I got some cables in. Thank you Paul Wasabi for sending me this awesome, freaking amazing, uh, Letcher, very expensive OCC copper cable. Really appreciate that. Uh, it's also 4.4 balanced, which is interesting because I don't really have a lot of that. And this is how this uh, entire video got started. So what we have here is a Dark Magician 2 in a 7-Eleven coupler using a balanced cable. So we have 4.4 balance. This little adapter that goes to 2.5. Also got another adapter here, which is a soft ears, which is a 4.4 to single ended 3.5. That's okay to do that. You can't go the other way, but uh, so let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, now I'm gonna plug this into a Motu Ultralight Mark V. That's pro quality interface. It's got a headphone out, very nice one. Uh, under one ohm impedance on the headphone out and most people say that that should be just fine for you know music listening audio file usages and such etc etc also the mark 5 is a well measured well um, uh, known quantity interface it's like I said well measured y you know it's performance metrics so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this cable here to the Motu mark 5 and I have the volume set to like, I don't know, 80 something ish, roughly on average. And so we're going to flip over to Room EQ Wizard and we're going to do a measurement, right? So in this particular case, we're doing the right channel. So that's the right headphone out. And just to show you this, we have a little bit of signal right here, right? Okay, cool. So we're doing that. So I'm just going to grab the other headphone with my hand like this just to make this absolutely clear ah, cursor right so I'm, I'm putting my finger over this guy here and I'm gonna stick it under my desk there's a, the reason for doing this right so I'm gonna go back and do a measurement and let's get a little measurement Okay, cool. Nice little measurement. Motu Mark V Ultralight. Now, <clears throat> this is exactly what happened. I was doing some frequency sweeps, tuning some IEMs, and I had the other IEM in my ear that I wasn't testing, right? Much like what I'm doing now. And suddenly I'm like, well, why the hell can I hear the test tones in the wrong earphone? So I figured let's just measure that, right? So I'm going to go back. By the way, Room EQ Wizard sends a little blip tone right as it's doing its measurement. It's like a pssst. And once it hears that, it starts its measurement and then it does timing things and, you know, all this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do this, except we're going to go to the other channel. So the one that's not plugged in the coupler. Now, the first thing is that it actually started the measurement, which is like, huh? And just to prove this, that is the right channel. And I just did the left channel. Let me flip back over. All right, so Rumi Q Wizard just complained and said that our levels are low. I guess I know they're low. Except that's actually a freaking signal there. And that little blip, it caught its own blip in the wrong channel, so it started the measurement. So if we measure from this to, oops, well, here to here. We have something like about 55 decibels. And in fact, if you look out up the crosstalk on the Motu's headphone jack that's been measured, it's 55 decibels. What the fuck? <laughs> that's a lot of signal going into the wrong channel. So then I'm like, all right, maybe something else that I'm not thinking of. So we'll flip back. And this time, I have one other amplifier that's actually balanced. So we're going to go for... Balanced to balanced, 4.4 .4 to 2.5 balanced, right? We're going to plug that into an X-Duo TA20 balanced tube amp, right? Get all the cables away from everything. I'm going to take, again, I'm not changing anything in the coupler, right? So I'm going to just take the other IEM, plug it with my finger, and stick it under my desk. So I did that. I'm going to go back to Room EQ Wizard, do a measurement. 
So um, I have to flip over to, we're gonna do the, the main outs are my XLRs, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's XLR out of the Mo2 to XLR on the uh, X-Duo TA20. All right, let's do a measurement. Um, okay, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, it's channel two. I wanna actually see a measurement, so let's go ahead and do that. Shit. Sorry, I had a little bit of that bleeding into my um, speakers. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. So it's just saying, Oh shit, hold on, got my volume too low and such. All right, I'll do that again. <laughs> One more try, right? Mm, yeah, that looks about right. So this is just a balanced amplifier compared to a single-ended. Should basically be the same on a graph. Nice, actually I hit that friggin' perfect. Okay, cool. So, I'm um, just gonna get rid of that one so we don't see it. All right, now here's the big deal, right? I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but this is on a balanced amplifier. So I'm gonna do the opposite channel, the one that's not in the coupler that I have under my desk with my finger plug in it, and we're gonna do a start. Now what just happened was it's waiting for the timing reference right around here, that little blip, that pss, and it didn't hear it. So what just happened was there's not enough channel bleed on the balanced cable to even start the measurement and get a graph on it. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. So, <clears throat> what we got going on here is extremely bad channel bleed. And here's the thing. I actually did the same test with the Archel 3 Pro, which is, I don't know, arguably one of the better single-ended amp uh, single, single amplifiers you can get and it did the same fucking thing. I can hear the signal in the wrong channel. So the effects from this are gonna be things like, the imaging is going to be blurred. It's going to have bass notes that um, overlap. So what I mean by that is the left channel's bass notes are gonna overlap into the right notes, the right channel's bass notes, vice versa. It's going to be, I think um, possibly, I don't think there's gonna be a phase difference, which means that we'll be combining, which means the bass would actually be somewhat stronger, probably on single-ended versus balanced, interesting, but also probably muddied up a little bit. In my impressions are that it's slightly more muddy and that <clears throat> single-ended has a little bit more center focus, which makes sense because you're getting like, it's, it's almost a crossfade or whatever they call that, you know, where you have, um, you can get some software to pump one channel into the other and get a more natural stereo uh, field, quote unquote natural, but uh, it's all bullshit, man. This is just arbitrarily, you know, one channel bleeding into the other, and it's no good. So, in the past, I was talking about how, you know, balance really could be... It's not that important, because basically it could just be more powerful, but it might not be. And for IEMs, what does that matter, really, right? It's because uh, generally most amplifiers have enough power for IEMs versus headphones. However, this is actually extremely severe. Um... This much channel bleed, especially where you can hear it in the wrong channel, if you can actually hear that, and especially as I turn the volume up 90 you know, decibels and above, that bleed becomes really, really obvious. So here's my public service announcement for today. The way to go for audiophiles is going to have to be balanced, and it, true balanced, not fake balanced, like as in just a 4.4 a plug that's not actually internally balanced with two DAC chips, two separate grounds. Um, the whole works. It's got to actually be fully balanced topology in the amplifier, fully balanced cable, and at the end of the day, then you will actually get a perfect channel separation, no channel bleed, and the best stereo imaging, and the best performance out of your IEMs. I know this is completely fucking obvious, like, you know, based on the theory of the thing, but it's good to actually see a measurement of why that's happening. This phantom fucking signal on the wrong channel is absolutely happening on any single-ended amplifier that I've tested. So, I mean, it's theoretically possible. I read that the Motu... Or, sorry, not Mo2, the uh, Mojo has more like an 80 decibel spread uh, crosstalk, which is great. However, if you look up the specs on balanced amplifiers, it's like 100 plus, right? 
channel separation. And that's, I mean, when you're talking about, we're, this is audiophile stuff, right? It's top, a top resolution, top performance, top everything. We don't want channel bleed. Absolutely fucking not. So, uh, yeah, as of right now, I'm pretty sad about that. I got a bunch of amplifiers I like, but uh, now that I know what to listen for, I can tell pretty quickly what's going on. So, and, and that's kind of the thing. I never really knew what to listen for. So that would be imaging that's not incredibly precise left to right. A very, very strong center focus probably means you have channel bleed. Um, and the only way to really know, I suppose, is to compare AB to compare with uh, the same IEM, but on a balanced topology and a balanced cable. Anyway, right on, and I will talk to you on the next one.